Both That's good. very sad. Thank you for that high-level oh, analysis, you. T. Governor. I would say that I want to see Crow and the boys play faster. They said in the interview, faster. They play. They with played pace. so fast. They played very fast. The heroes fast. are limiting. Uh, you have a, a storm and an ET. I'd rather them have simpler point-and-click disables. I think Alliance Ooh. had a much easier time actually beginning fights in the mid-game and afterwards. It was always Nigma having to play better to get initiation. I thought we go in jokey at the end of this, Shiva. So can I now? Can you want to go first? Sure, go you first. You can go first if you okay, like. Okay, well, my point is that they actually, I think, they played too fast because mm. they did so well, got those two lanes of racks, and, and then they, they had nothing. So they played too fast. They kind of whiffed their timings a little bit, but I don't think they played bad. I think Alliance just played good. Now you... New plan. I just think Alliance played well. They just played around... That's what I said. Yeah, hey. yeah. There we go. Good job. <laughs> I just think Alliance played well around the tankiness of their heroes, and I think Nigma they had the strategy that they have performed so well on. They were able to be, I believe, Liquid with his exact strategy. Yep. Or Secret. One of those Someone. Teams. Yeah, yeah someone. So yeah, I think uh, they played at a very nice pace. It was just Alliance adjusted to it well. I it don't think you need to change thing. it. The game was amazing. The Why are we talking great. about drafts and stuff? The game was well, great. We want to talk about drafts, but more specifically, we want to talk about game two drafts. That's Maybe. right. And that will happen very, very, very soon. I'm feeling without you Days fly by and the more I'm thinking that I don't want to be alone And I wait for something new I wait for something Can Game 2 really live up to the expectations that Game 1 has set? Normally, 
after a performance like that, the second game will always be a little less delivering. But I'm really hoping that it's going to be another bloodbath team fight bonanza like that first game. We got Alliance versus Team Nigma, Upper Division, Western European DPC League. Of course, you're watching Dream League Season 15, powered by Intel, because what else would you be doing right now? Truth. Right, oh, man. Series. Preach and it. A lot on the line. We keep repeating it. This is this is Saturday. We yes. save the prime time match for this day yeah, this time. For 11 oh. p.m. on the Saturday. I know Europe. none of you have anything better to do. It's quarantine. I'm You're having to drink home. coffee, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to go to bed anymore. And <laughs> keep in mind the stakes. It's not just about getting to the major. It's about how many points do you get from the league. Yes. Europe, let's be honest. They shit the bed at the major. Nobody's got points but secret. Both of these teams, in order to qualify directly to TI, need to be top two in this league and quite possibly also top eight, top six, top four at the major. And you could even feel it. Even two racks down Alliance. They play for their win condition. They get the rapier on Nico Baby and they continue playing to win the game. Yep. Me and T were talking. We were talking of, some shop. Mm -hmm. Lack of evasion on the gyro may have played a role. The rapier doesn't give true strike. Oh no, it doesn't, Carl. Indeed, and a butterfly was lacking on the gyro. Mm. I, was, I just I just love the fact that, you know, obviously it's not last patch, it's been several patches ago. I just love the addition of the blinks. You know, we have no one really talks Upgraded about blinks. Of all the three different blinks. Yeah. Like we never re like people never truly talk about them. I just I you want to have oh hey you we know did. what you should do you should do a soapbox about on the, the blinks. blinks. There you go. Maybe or you make tea and do then a thing. Yeah, we We've been brainstorming so segments, options. guys. We're good. Okay, so Alliance, you know they're going the back to the try and test. Ah man, I would be so afraid. I'm sure that Alliance, like Secret, has been playing a little bit against VP. And let's be real, Virtus Pro are picking Timbersaw whenever it's available. Mm -hmm. I don't really see a problem with it. And traditionally, if you look at patches where Timber Straw, it's Tim Timber. Well, Timber Straw. <laughs> it's the <laughs> new <laughs> surprise for when the DPC Timber cosmetic. It's a straw. Timber no. Timber so when Timber um, is strong, going back even to TI6, they just first pick it for Moo. It's good. 16 games in a row, they win. Mm -hmm. In uh, the game that OG or played against Alliance, uh, the second game of that series, uh, Alliance also opened with Snap Timber. Uh, they will first phase pick it every time unless it is banned, I believe. And what mostly. was it that they considered? Uh, see, I just can't, I, I know Puck is a, is a crazy solid hero, but mm. I would be hesitant banning it against, against Alliance. I'd be more afraid I think the key thing that we have to mention oh, here simply God. is this the first game was a game where Nigma was in control. They had the two racks, they had the you know the 10 pocket mm -hmm. advantage, and it was you know the rapier purchase, that mid to late game decision making of Alliance that gave them the win. But I think in terms of like the pacing of the game, Nigma shouldn't really change up shop and Alliance, they might need to tweak a couple of things to have more impact in that early aggression. Yeah. You know, when they are get, taking those 20 minute fights, they need to be able to have some rebuttal and then they're not gonna be playing for the big comeback. Like it wasn't a massive comeback, but in theory. Oh, actually, you know, you know, it was a big comeback. There were two yeah. racks down. I, I want to see an AA from or Necro from Nigma. I want a actual Timbersaw counter. It doesn't feel like there are too many of them. Another one I preach about is Shadow Fiend, uh, <laughs> Death Prophet, yeah. falling off the planet. Not sure why. We discussed the Crypt Swarm mana cost being significantly reduced at level four from 165 to 125, yet unpicked as a core uh, in most of the games we've seen in the Western European division. But this is the key phase. A lot of bonus time being spent by mm -hmm. Enigma trying to think. Alliance, I think, probably one of the better teams to prep for in a sense that they have a diverse hero pool, but they follow the same archetypes, right? Oh, yeah, their draft pretty much, it always feels like S4 plus one, you know, support's picked early. Nika Baby kind of gets some type of priority, normally last pick around the area, unless it's like a glaringly obvious, oh, okay, we got to pick Void or Wraith King mm -hmm. here. But yeah, no, it, yeah, they, they are one of the more understood teams but again they get to they play their team fight so well it, they can kind of get through drafts being a little bit more predictable yep. well it will be the wraith getting some respect shown to nico baby's performance previous game yeah the key thing here is enigma i they're just taking away heroes that when you run as five at them these are carries that can survive that initial jump and then turn it back around on you yeah um, um mm -hmm. one hero that is still in the pool uh, that we talked about uh, quite a bit today. We haven't seen, though, Faces Void. Did that hero... It, I, I think that's banned. Enigma has uh, yeah, banned. Yeah, last yeah. ban. Yeah. Especially when you have a hero like Oracle, which is, I have to save. Sure, of course, you know, ah, we can't grow anyone because Oracle's in the picture, but with Timbersaw, he's one of the best heroes that gives 
free vision in regards to I'm mm -hmm. walking around the fight. Perception. Eventually, Oracle will pop his head out and then bam, Chrono, yeah. he's dead. It's also it's the damage too. And I think Wraith King sets up for it in the same way where you land the stun and then there's S4 for a full combo and it's just a absurd amount of pure damage stacked on top of a Wraith King crit. Troll from Alliance the Band, that makes sense. What other than the Faces Void would you ban out here? Uh, Cause is the Jugger still yeah, a problem? It, life Stealer. Life Stealer or Jugger? Yeah. Or, or Void? I'd I mean, pick your I'd, poison I'd at this say, point. I'd say Jugger. Oh, oh they ban out Slark. Okay. I guess extra strong they, they against the... Void, the uh, no. Okay, all right. Is cool. I, okay, okay, yes. Because of course, Void against Timbersaw is very good yeah. in the di dilation. And, and this yeah? is, in a way, what you ban Slark because while previously Void was like the counter to Slark, Slark now with the pounce disabling leap has a much better matchup. And this answers the Jug and the Life Stealer. You can't really play either into Void and expect a successful late game. I will say the concern though for Nigma is they now have a Void and an Oracle that can't really lane into Timbersaw that well. Worked for Wings. Game one or game two of the TI finals, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of things have changed, Kyle. I don't know. The heroes actually, yeah, those, heroes are, those heroes are kind of the same. Student of history. <laughs> two, TI6 was five years ago. Yeah. You old yet? No. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Many things, but okay, fundamentally though, yeah. Oracle doesn't do anything to Timber. Maybe level one can That's be true. tickling. But I, Void I actually, bashes and maybe a javelin Lou, could do something. Who has griped about that to me because oh, his there words, we go. he would have been fine in that lane but Shadow bashed him twice in a row. <laughs> like literally got a hit, bash, hit, bash, and he died. Otherwise, you're right, he would probably be just fine. They go for a Nyx. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Preventing I... the storm pick, perhaps? I guess, that's a... I mean, it's always nice. Timber, no disables. Nyx, uh, a whole bunch of disables. Yeah. Nah, this feels just like a drafting thing, you know? Like, Nygma have taken the void away from Alliance, and then, again, Alliance. I feel like Nigma would happily thrive on picking a Nyx themselves. You're playing into the Timbersaw, you're playing into the Snapfire. This just feels like a block pick, if anything. Two block flick picks in a row, and now Nigma uh. just go for the Tusk itself. Like, Yeah, well, ha, hey, this is, uh, this is gonna be the game where, I don't wanna say we see whether or not this roster shuffle for Curl and the lads is a good decision, but you, this is what you've put Miracle on mid for. You have Void as your carry Centaur offlane. You need pick. damage. Yeah. You have overall last pick. Whew. A Nyx makes it difficult, but the whole, if you ignore Alliance's heroes, we're banning him. What do you think? Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. yeah like, <laughs> uh, I can see some cool Cataclysm. Some Wombo and some Combo. But like, that's that's what I feel like we've but, been missing. You know, oh, the nice thing as well about the Nyx pick, it not only blocks Nygma from picking it, but it also, all the heroes you want to pick with a Void are the Int Voids, you know, the yeah. big magic deal. So it also kind of soft covers from the strategy from Nygma. Yeah, I, I, the second phase of this draft has actually been, yeah, pretty exciting. Now Alliance, low on bonus time. Always love a good draft. They're both around that 30 second mark as we get to the end here. Yeah, I think when you get below 30 reserve, actually, no, I'm not going to meme it. Let's not even try. What we got a PA, yeah, PA. okay. A good answer to the void. You have to be a little cautious. Um, the Maelstrom build, somewhat effective against the PA because the lightning procs don't miss, but it's also a natural MKB buyer. However, before that comes online, PA does enjoy playing against void. A couple of crits, that is the burst. And it does seem to be a bit of what Alliance are going for with this timber pick is they have this hard lockdown from the Knicks. Previously, it was limp on the Sand King and then a carry hero that with a crit and a timber chain combination, it's like 3k damage. We have had multiple weathermans now where Pert has identified that like normal corrosion doesn't really help too much against the Vanguard. So we'd like to make, because Nika Baby's a big fan of going corrosion oh, yeah. and fighting. Every game. I'd like to see that maybe be changed up, especially into a, a Vanguard Centaur. Maybe if he buys it before Vanguard and he has like a good timing to a pressure, maybe. But yeah, I'd like to see the PA go a bit more greedy in the game and try and get himself into the game as quick as possible. Looking less, looking more towards the jungle than for kills. Okay, so accelerate his farm versus look for kills. Yeah, exactly yeah. that, yeah. Viper, good ban from Alliance. Mm -hmm. I think Kuro has a good read. Just get remove Limp's heroes. Oh, no stuns. All right, this is it. Is Invoker getting banned? Uh, well, Sand King is also still in the pool. How did we think about that Sand King performance anyway? Because I know you guys I mean, weren't really that sold. Obviously, he won the game. I he, mean, he did yeah. better than expected. They they laid their stuns beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, but it, yeah, that game was more about the camaraderie of Alliance coming into play mm -hmm. and the identifying the win condition when behind. 
rather yeah. than the haha they're drafting this and that i think it's just kind of in the moment Man. the beauty of the dota yeah i think i was gonna say invoker maybe that's more of a miracle special but alliances draft deals with that quite well a death prophet you have some serious issues with because there's an oracle and a tusk behind it so double save oh yeah for sure plus yeah. the silence mm -hmm. is yeah. super strong we're going for a like fan vote here kyle the invoker is a fan vote we everyone True. wants to see miracle invoker that's why we're hoping to push it into you know Nigma pick invoker pick invoker yep. but then Viper if we DP, think it hard strong. enough exactly know. it's just i mean the draft screams for an invoker I... Chat screams for an invoker too. I would love Alliance though. Okay. Make sure, uh, okay uh, Kyle? Shadow Fiend. Sh that, the, I guess, look, at Can the end of the day, the we first, want. Uh, Chief? We look what? at the roster change, we think this is so that Miracle can be on the win condition, not support the win condition. Want, so, yeah. SF Invoker, TA, not really a Dota hero. Literally any of the, uh, the cool mids. And then Alliance go for the Storm and stuff. All right. SF looks a bit cooler. Invoker. I really, I dig an SF. I, or the Arcane I, Blade, Yules BKB. I, yeah, it, it, it vibes. They did it. Oh, they, they did it! it. Woo! All right. Oh, it's going to be fun. This is it. Oh, so, really bad. I don't know. A I lot, mean, is a this lot on the line. <laughs> this is your entire pride and everything, you know? If you're returned to the mid lane on your Invoker and you lose. This is what Woo! fans of Nigma have been asking for for literally years. Yes, yes, yep. yes. Please, like, we, everyone's seen the YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. That's how Miracle mm -hmm. came to the scene. Mm -hmm. Crazy plays, level 25 Invoker, when that used to be the power spike. It's a tough game for him. It's a tough matchup, but this is this is why you made the change. This yep. is why he's back on mid. I just like the fact that game two, both drafts are so nicely rounded out. They've got a little bit of everything. We aren't seeing any big holes in either draft. It's like, oh, they've got this weakness. They've got that weakness. I think, again, if you want to try and look at that, Alliance has maybe the better laning phase in off lane, but yep. so does, you know, the, the both off lanes are going to go yep. well for both teams. So it is about mid, yeah, if anything. I, I, this is to me like as the, the, this is the prototype of what's made uh, Kuro and the guys successful. Yes, they might be, they have inferior matchups, you could say, but they have the ability to outskill. It's a GH Tusk. It's a Miracle Invoker with the Void to set up. Like, they can make some plays and just straight up win team fights based on raw skill. Can we just fast forward like half an hour into this game? Like, we don't need to see the laning phase no. and the Roshan. We want to see the big I want to see the laning stage. So, all right, all right. My there, word there, is law there. here. Right, there, we're gonna there. see the laning stage, and we're gonna see our commentary team of Odie Pixel and Fogged. Thank you very much, GVS. Game two between Alliance and Nigma, and, and, and Fogged. What do you reckon about this? We are indeed getting to see the Invoker come through for Nigma to close things up. Is it gonna be a good game for it, or do you think Alliance might be able to walk away with a two-zero? He just left the game. <laughs> Okay, he's back. He's he reconnected. Back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they got the combo right. If they can get to that point, sure. Yeah. But I, I actually, I like, I like Alliance's chances. They have Nyx versus Invoker. Like that is, it's never easy. The nice. game is always going to be difficult for the Invoker. Yes. Your int gain, like you have, you have the highest, if not the, I think it's the second highest int gain. I think Pugna's like four point eight or five. Invoker has four point six. Just Nyx mana burning you in the mid game and stuff like that. It's devastating. We'll see what Miracle can do. He's going to go. It looks like Quaswex at least to start it off here. Yeah. So it looks like he wants to be a little bit more active. I, I think that actually fits because looking at their actual overall oh. control in the games, like Oracle and Tusk is kind of weak overall. As ILTW, oh, he's, he's dead. Uh, he's very, 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 he very, went up. very dead. He went up the hill on his own. He did. <laughs> I, I, I clearly just didn't expect at all Alliance to be there, but they were. A whole team of them. Ah, first yeah. block for Alliance, very easily for. All right, FNG, maybe they'll get one back. And they give it to Miracle, so he's got a little bit extra to start with. Get some extra tangos. Not the first blood, but some extra gold at the least. Yeah. No, I mean, as you said, the Nyx Assassin is going to be an issue for Miracle, and they've got... They got a lot of face... Uh, a lot of heroes that are going to get in the face of Miracle, right? There's PA yes. Storm down the lines. They are heroes Even that Timber. are going to be able to, yeah, that all three cores are going to be able to jump on top of Miracles. So it's not going to be an easy game for his Invoker and a lot of pressure really on, on the saves. And of course, both supports that he does have behind in this game, Tusk and Oracle, can offer that sort of protection, which he's, he is definitely going to need when Alliance come hunting for him in the mid game. Yeah, absolutely. The thing is, though, I'm looking at this Void and I'm looking at the Invoker and we're, we're seeing you know, the specialty, the amazingness. 
where else is the damage coming from in that chrono? If there's no invoker there, sure, there is miracle, yeah. like no damage. It has to be miracle to do it. So if he does get taken out at the start of the fights, it could go pretty one-sided. Alliance could just dominate it. So we'll see how it all ends up after these lanes and see how this Timbersaw is able to do. This game, it feels like S4 is going to have oh, look at this pretty mate. freebie. As TP over from GH nice and early, they're looking to try and do something about Limp. But uh, they're not going to be able to do so. As, uh... Yeah, that was oh. aggressive TP there. GH just TP in out straight away. Level one, of course, nothing else to offer to catch Limp. So Limp's able to walk away. It's very early. Like, he's done this, I've seen so many times now, just TPing to help out Miracle. Usually it's around, like, the level two, and two of the times was an IO. But that's, I mean, it's less than, like, it's not even a minute and a half in, and he tries to help out mid. Okay. Right, he's going to make his way back up to top. Try and help put some pressure on to, to Nico, baby, safely. He's got to stay up here. That's the thing about GH. Like, he moved mid. Now his TP won't be available for the next type of move. And he does have to help my control. Like, this PA, as well as this Snapfire, the Orb of Venom, and then the Blightstone on the other hand. You know, Centaur, not really... He's tanky in HP, but his armor is a bit... A bit low. Even with the Ring of Protection, he's at this 4. So one of the lower. So they do need GH up there. And then down on the bottom lane, RTW, S4. We seeing any of these cores going to have a tough time down here? Uh, I don't think the cores are at all. I think maybe Kuroki could have some problems if he steps up too far. S4, though, I think this is like this is very free for Timber. The sure. last time he was very zoned, he was versus Io Gyro, heavy damage. Oh, There's not a lot of damage coming between these two. Kuro, Hunting just gets him by yeah. himself. He's able to just walk Beautiful. him down a second round of the Impale, and he's gone. And they did get the side pull off. I think they denied two of the creeps or so, maybe one and a half. As ILTW will be able to get that range creep. So ILTW should be able to get his farm down here. As long as he does have the Oracle behind him for the most part. Because there is some harassment that this Timber Saw Nyx Lane can actually do to avoid, too. Since he does have the Orb of Venom on the Timber. Is he top? GH in mind control. They're running down FNG. They're gonna have him here, FNG. Good. Oh, the South! The oh, South. A little bit of an attempt to stay alive, but South will be put to waste as they trap him in the shards. And PA is still free farming. Nico, baby, he has the whole the entire creep wave under the tower. Not going to miss a single one, it looks like. So it did pull them all the way out of the lane to be able to go for that kill. And GH again, he's swinging toward mid. At least this looks like to grab a bounty rune this time, but... He could look to make moves. He could still be looking to make those pressure plays onto the Storm, since yeah. it is the Invoker Crosswex. Storm not still six. They could look to get a kill and enable Miracle. And give him an earn charge. That would actually be pretty nice if they can for him. Absolutely, yeah. They they can set up. We'll see how quick Alliance will be on TPs if Nigma do try and make a play onto onto Limp. Watch FNG. What people? Uh, this is a note for the five positions, guys. Look at him walking to his lane, saving his TP in case yep. anything happens. Very important because there's nothing that he doesn't need to be back top. Nico Baby's not getting pressured, so saving TP very important as your five positions. Bottom lane, Kuro. Kuro. The stick charges and will be fine here this time round, but still. Uh, having to play very careful on this Oracle as so Alliance keep running him out of the lane. He is securing. You know, LTW is still getting all that secured farm at the very least, so even though Kuro is getting hunted, it's going well for the Void. And CS across the map, I mean... Everyone's doing all right. I mean, a little bit of a lead here in the mid. Well, even though he's sure he's up on the CS, but Miracle's actually got more denies. So all in all, rather close so, you know, on the mid lane as well. Yeah. My control having to jungle, though, is definitely a concern. They've completely ditched the top lane. He actually steals the small camp from his Invoker. Invoker doesn't farm it anyway. He's not like a Storm or a Kunk or anything like that. So it's not too bad taking it away, but is moved out of the lane for the time being with GH leaving that. So Nico Baby is going to have absolute free farm compared to the Void, who is getting pressured a tiny bit. Right. Don't have to feel good if you're Alliance. Oh, for sure. That's just going to give Nico Baby a good path to first quick major item to mid lane. Burning the mana of Limp. And what's FNG up to? Looks like he's just starting to get the, some wards down, at least a sentry. Just checking if there was one in the area here. Doesn't actually put down his ward. He's gonna, okay, he's just going to get a lane ward. I thought he was going to scout the triangle area to watch in case the Centaur does go back there, but nope, just going to get a lane ward in my control. He'll cut the wave to secure his Vanguard. He doesn't want to die in the lane from the uh, little Shredder and that annoying Minus Armor coming in from the Orbit Corrosion, but he might actually get caught here. I mean, they're, they're, Free Vanguard. They're try and That'd be a big him. kill. He's going for the TP oh. out. Ooh, oh, no! no. Cookie straight over him. 
He could have cookied Nico maybe too if they'd done it. If they'd, they'd, been if they'd have been able to call it. Sure, good. they only just got vision, so it's very much a case yeah. of he may just be about to finish the TP. So FNG, he just goes for it, hoping that maybe the radius would catch him, but ends up just leaping right over him. And now he's got Vanguard. So now he can actually return to the lane a lot safer, not going to be at risk of dying from the crazy chase from PA and Snapfire. But Snapfire is making the move. S4 getting close to level 6 down bottom already. ILTW only level 5. There's going to be a tough tower for Enigma to hold on to. They do not have wave clear on anybody in the draft, actually. Shibata. LTW. I've got the opener. He's dead. Very they nicely done there from the, the shadows coming in alliance. And this tower's dead just from that. They have no way to be able to... They can't fight down here, and they can't deep push. They don't have a like Grimstroke or anything. He's going for like Miracle. That. Miracle's got backup. GH coming in as well as Kuro. But the shards out still has mana. He's got enough to jump over these shards if he needs to. In fact, he's oh, happy he to the... turn and punch back into GH. He used the static. I was like, oh god, he actually used the remnant. He can't zip now, but can't actually chase him. He will get the catapult killed, though. He walks up to the high ground, so no Ooh. pressure from Nigma onto the mid tower. ILTW As bottom, ILTW actually he returned? Back. He did come back what? down it. Oh, he's gonna be I think fine. he's very lucky to live. Uh, this is not a place for him to be anymore. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be problematic for the early game of Nigma. Like I don't know how they actually stop the pushes when the Timber Timber Saw just starts starts cruising through with level four reactive armor. They're going to have to bring the fight. They're going to have to bring quite a lot of heroes to actually just stop that because they don't have they don't have wave clear. They have to actually just fight to stop those tower pushes. Let's see what Nigma can catch down here. They're going to go for him. See your hands, Kent. Can he give any sort of safety here? As they're going fully in onto S4. They'll have the burst. They'll bring down S4. They'll actually get the snowball over towards FNG as well. So Nigma, they nice. make the rotation. They'll get two kills for it. Kuro's happy. He's the one to get the last hit on the boat for them. Tag team, always a blessing. Just enough damage to take him out. And now LTW can actually farm the lane a little bit better as they are able to make that nice aggressive move. Miracle also with this urn, He's getting a little more active. Going for limp. On mid, but Hansken is around. Oh, oh, trap that him. also might be in trouble. Oh, he's looking pretty dead. As Nigma, and they, they're getting action going. They're getting these kills. Of course, overall, the Alliance, they do add their three cores at the top. And Nico, baby, this PA has continued to have complete free farm here in the opening eight minutes. No attention yet to be brought to, towards this top lane. No, in this centaur, sure, he's got Vanguard, but still, the armor is something that's going to be one thing that we look at. Sure, he's got the six, but with the little Shredder plus Medallion, he's going to be at negative 11 very quickly, plus the Orb of Corrosion, he's even more. So he does have to be quite cautious up here with Stampede on cooldown. We'll see mid. Oh, Lip, he's making the hit. I'm in the same time. They're making the moves around mid lane. Mind Control will go down top. I'll see if Nigma's able to do something with this around the mid. So RTW is looking for the setup. He has a chrono. Is it going to really want to use it just for oh. Hansken alone? And actually, Hansken oh. actually duking around the trees oh, as uh, they can't really get a clear angle in onto him. As uh, he's actually going to be able to walk away despite being surrounded pretty much by the four members of Nigma. Oh, that was so nice. S4, he's trying to get an angle to be able to approach back in. He's got the hood, a lot tankier now, and he should be able to stop this tower push. And we'll see what Limp does with his time as he does see this bounty rune up on the high ground. Doesn't look to want to go into there as Nigma's starting to chase him. I mean, this is sort of time spent where Nigma's running around the map. RTW was sort of away from hitting the creeps. GH and Miracle, FNG. they will get the set up onto FNG. With the cold snap, he has no escape. So Nigma, I mean, this sort of the, the, this active group that they've got roaming around the map is getting these pickoffs. It's just, it's not slowing down the cause of Alliance. No, it's not. And I mean, Timberson now has his new home. He's going to take over the mid lane, stop any pushes coming on there. Kuroki, he's getting his levels bottom. And Limp still just continuing to get all this farming. Let's see if he gets Ooh. the rune. RTW. He's going to see an opportunity to just jump in, drop the chrono to Limp. They have enough damage. They Limp's away. Oh my. He's able to get out of there. And now Alliance, they're going to turn and try and fight back. Snowball will give some safety for RTW. They pop the stampede as well to get them out. But they're chasing Miracle. over to Miracle. As they've got the detection, Dust is out. They're in with the dagger. Miracle, he's popping the stick charges. He's trying to run, but he can't get away from this as they'll kill off Miracle. Nico Baby's able to pick up the kill. He's the one to take it. 
and you definitely tip him if you're limp. You know, they've been tipping each other back and forth the last game. He tornadoed him during the chrono. Ooh, he literally stops yeah. so much damage going on to the storm. Like, if he just does EMP and then tornadoes uh -oh, for last hit, right. it's a secured kill, but um, that's a big mistake for Miracle. Absolutely. If RTW is able to get one more hit in, that's all that was needed. That was a guaranteed kill, but it wasn't the case. And Alliance is able to turn it around and end the whole scenario with them being the ones to take down the enemy mid laner. And Chronosphere has a very long cooldown. It's got 100 seconds left on it. It's going to be tough for them to make moves, but they're going to continue. S4, they're going to poke him. It's starting to hurt. Let's see if they've got enough damage. Tornado. Oh, he's going to be okay. Stick charge and a timber chain out. He is away. That's going to continue to be the case for most of this early game, it feels like. This is definitely one of those games that at this point, 11 minutes in, damage to, to kill the timber, it, it just... It, it's going to be hard to find it. They're going to have to throw every single ability they have in the book on him. Yeah, they're going to need the Vessel. And Miracle is at least close to that. So that will at least open up the opportunities. Because without that, I mean, their damage is really going to be limited quite a lot across the board from Nygma. Just with the way that they have set themselves up and the way this early game has gone. Hanskin. He's scouting things out. He sees Miracle. He's going to set up on this. For him. Gets the hit. Gets the stun. They're in as well. The kiss is coming in for the side. Miracle's dead. Another move where Alliance are able to deal with the Invoker. And Limpy's looking for more. Sets up straight away over towards GH. He's given some respect to this position of Mind Control, but S4 is ready to cut him with the Shackram, slowing down Mind Control. So they can continue to chase on to this, uh, S4. They keep playing around with Mind Control, but Mind Control is, is very beefy with the with the Vanguard and the Cloak. So he'll be fine, but I, but again... But it's all space. I, Look I, at the PA. Like, Miko, baby, I mean, almost this, is going to have Desso finished up. This The yeah. Void is starting to really fall behind. This is going to be hard. I mean, Nico Baby does not rely on any sort of long cooldowns at all to, to be highly destructive in these fights. As you say, you know, and for it's RTW, a good matchup it's, for him. It's all about the Chronos. Yep. And it's a good overall matchup for the PA it's a good versus, game. versus a Void. Like, it sure your Maelstrom and stuff will be annoying when those procs will come out because of that true strike it does give when the procs do happen. But besides that, like, damage is going to be pretty limited for him. And Miracle's got to be a little more careful. Last two times dying, two times in a row. He has got it's backup tough. to keep him safe, but if he's not, if he ends up being too far forward, they, as we said off the draft, Alliance have so many ways to jump this Invoker and catch him by surprise. And it's always going to be hard. Like playing into Nyx is just always going to make the game yeah. naturally more difficult for the Invoker. You're just always going to get caught. You're so fragile if you do get jumped up. He's got Vessel. He needs to get a charge now for them to have any chances for them to kill that Timber if he's not completely alone. Because S4 just keeps tanking up more and more. And because of that, like PA and Storm just free farming during all this. This feels really good if you're an Alliance fan. As my control, he's got Blink. Okay, let's see what Enigma's able to do with this. Blink, they've got the Spirit Vessel, Chronos back up. This is their time to strike. There we have it. Some round. RTW is going to be hoping there's no Tornadoes coming in on his Chrono this time. Yeah. It's not, skin, not the right now he's... He's scouting the whole area, getting a ward down to protect his storm, because Limp, he's playing pretty far up in a pretty dangerous position, what normally would be. But because of Hanskin swooping over, getting ward, not as dangerous. And they're actually going to avoid the entire smoke of yeah, Nygma because of that. they're not finding anything down here. Uh, good read of the map from Alliance, playing on this whole left side together around that Nyx assassin, which gave him info. And that's going to be pretty much the Orchid down now for Limp. So he's going to be able to pick and choose the targets he goes for. And all of them are quite susceptible to this, except for the Centaur. Yeah, I mean, Limp and Nico, They're actually going to start just, the Roche. I mean, why not? They've, they've got the minus armor. Uh-oh. I mean, Nigma's not going to expect this at all. This is one of those timings that... They're, they're just not going to be ready for. Alliance, they're, they're, they're your half HP. And I want to see FNG doing a little bit more maximizing with his Shredder. He's burning the whole charges rather than sta so, you know, staggering that minus armor. So it makes it a little bit slower, but they're still going to get away with it. It's going to be so quick. They're smoking up again, Nygma, to try and make it over here. See, just try and find out what Alliance is doing. Oh it's my god, Nico, baby. Oh, oh my oh. god. Ooh, if, if, that, if, that, if that was a bash, he's dead. If that, it didn't, if that hit and it was a bash, he was absolutely dead. <laughs> Living on the edge oh there, Nico. Goodness. That was definitely a uh, little scary there as the Orchid comes <laughs> He's calculated. out. He was like, well, if we uh, run the calculations, this will be a miss. It actually didn't bash like seven hits in a row. Yeah, I think it, it, even it if FNG up. got bashed, it was close. <laughs> right, this is a huge spike now for Alliance. They're going to feel really strong in these next few fights. Just have to watch out for that Mind Control Blink Dagger. As there's still, like we said, no Vessel charges still for Miracle. Hasn't found a kill yet since he's picked it up. 
I mean, yeah, they're, they're looking for action, Nigma. Really want it. But uh, Alliance just it's not being caught out. No, it's like they don't want to go for S4 until they have yeah. that vessel charge either, because they'll just get turned on. All the Alliance is waiting at the wings if they do go on this timber. So FNG ready with kisses. He's going to get a ward down too to get some info. Oh, they're going to try for the jump it. on S4. But Limps in with the counterplay. Zip straight away over to the back line. Stampy's pot Nigma. They're having to run. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They're having to get back. But the Kisses, they continue to get laid down on the GH. Nico Baby jumps in, takes RTW. down GH. They're going to be able to bring down RTW as well. They're not done yet, Alliance. Limp trying to head up to the high ground. Miracles away with the Ghost Walk. But you saw it there. As soon as the move was made onto S4, it was... It fell apart so quickly. Limp zips across over to the back lines, and suddenly Nigma they're having to scatter. They're popping the stampede. They're having to get out. There's no fight to be had as soon as Alliance knows exactly where they all are. I mean, they're lucky even too to get out. Just stampede actually yeah. saves like everybody's life. Otherwise, they might lose three, four heroes just because of that chase forward. Great bait. Alliance just they're reading the map so perfectly this game. Just everyone's sitting behind the timber, knowing that they can't actually kill him. They immediately get the jump and a great ward. FNG wards right before the fight starts. He sees everything that allows Limp to go for that backline instantly. <laughs> Little clenching for a second. <laughs> And we just keep watching. Look at Void and Invoker's net worth during all this downtime. You know, they're all it's about fighting, trying back. to win a fight yeah. to get enabled off of it, but it's just not happening. Alliance. He, mid. he gets anywhere closer to this side of the lane, he would be in a lot of trouble, Miracle, but he won't. He's away at this point where he's close to the Midas recipe gold. And you can understand why he goes for Midas, of course. Oh, he just wants, he needs yeah. Exhort. He needs to max Exhort this game for them to have damage for Cataclysm. So yeah. he's going to need a long time of farm for them to have that. As Alliance, they're going to have a huge window in like the next 10 plus minutes or so. Ooh. Miracle. Ooh. And those around. That's going to actually get the catch on to Kuro. I mean, Kuro, that's an easy kill. Evaporated. So he's got, I mean, GH, he's, he comes in for a punch. That's a, he's dead too. That's a bit of a cheeky punch. He's going to die for this one. The Kiss is coming in as well. Mind Control's going to look to TP out. They've got the damage to take him out. They don't. So Mind Control will manage to get out of there, but... Oh, yeah, the GH says uh, <laughs> he wants to take a fight, but he was not ready to take oh. one. And LTW, he'll TP top, he'll get the deny, but look at Hanskin. I mean, they're coming Instantly across. making the move over. They're all rotating over because run. they know LTW TP'd. He has to book it. They might catch him behind the tower if he heads straight down the lane. They, they see my control instead. My, my control's trying to jump onto S4. They're going to get the zip in. RTW's got to get out they're to the side. Going to turn. Tornado's down. They've already managed to bring down Kuroki. RTW is just not really seeing an opportunity to get the Chrono out. He knows that even if he does, is he actually going to have the damage? As they're over to the side, the disarm will push them back. Limp spends some time waiting on the high ground. Nico Baby's still going. Jumps in onto GH. GH goes down. They'll bring down Nico Baby the once. Can they do it again? They Let's have see. a Chrono ready to go, but they're in with the silence. They made the jump onto RTW. RTW is going to get taken out before he can get the spell off at all. As RTW Miracle and maybe the, the mic control, they're dying underneath the tier threes. As Nico Baby's going to be able to get out alive as well. Heads into the trees, TP's out. They're getting oh these kills God. up on the high ground. 18 minutes in, underneath tier 3 towers, and Nigma's not able to punish it. They're just they're just crunching through this game. ILTW, he, I don't even know how many times he stop cancels his chrono there. Like 10 times trying to find an opportunity. I mean, it's but hard. Alliance, they're playing it so well. The yeah. way that they like danced around it, the way that they were split up perfectly too, and it's just a quick move. They see the Void TP top and the whole entire dynamic, the entire team of Alliance instantly swings over for a battle. They really are understanding how strong they are in the game right now. And Nigma's crumbling quite quickly. This Invoker, hard, yeah. he still has the Midas queued up. He's probably feeling like he still needs it, but uh, maybe still, feeling yeah. like he just has to rush Ags because he might not have time in the game to just make that Midas and Ags work out. It's tough. It is very, very hard. It's very hard. I mean, yeah, you saw, as you said, you know, he has the chrono, but he just he can't. He, he, can't he, know, he knows if he drops that chrono, it, it, there's, there's not going to be any damage. Nobody's going to die. And then there's two and a half minutes where he doesn't have chrono for Alliance to just yeah. crush the next it, like overall time so of the game. So he's got to be so careful and so yeah. sure that when he does drop it, they, they get at least one kill or something out of it. Yeah, they just, they really don't have the spells to throw in there until Miracle has more levels. Yeah. He can Alacrity the Void, he can throw an EMP, but besides that, the rest of the team, it's it's an Oracle throwing a Purifying Flames in there. That's that's pretty much it. So, it's going to take time, and Alliance, 5k gold lead, pumping out the items. 
He's got that Midas. Sold the crest too. He's got the Midas on He's the Invoker. Time. He's time we'll now. See. Get him the Tomes as well. All that XP, you've got to get it on Miracle. Yep. You've got to get him those levels. Lights. I mean, Lights they, though. They, they, Still yeah. looking for the fight. They can fight whenever they want. They have BKB no reason to on the PA. Back. Full freedom. My control. Oh, and RTW. Oh, they're just throwing the kisses. They they're are. In. They're going to be able to get in straight away. So RTW needs help and he needs it now. They will be able to remove the star. That's the RTW. Jumps down to the low ground, but Kuro is out. Nico Baby diving in with the BKB. Turn it over towards GH and Mike trying to pop the stampede. GH is going to live here. The dagger not quite enough RTW. damage to him off. Kuro's buying back. He knows he has to keep RTW safe, but they're over the stun. False promise comes out in time as Kuro will be able to protect RTW. He's able to turn around, take down Hansken. Uh, that's four. He's on top of the void here. RTW jumps off to the side. It's back up to full HP. Start from Miracle. Push it back, Nico. Baby, they're moving in onto the PA. RTW jumps up to the high ground. They're focusing down on Nico Baby. The Chrono's out. They catch there Nico Baby. They catch S4 as they bring down the PA. They turn towards the Timber Store. Have they got enough damage for him? S4 getting low. The Bashes come in. Miracle picks up the triple kill as Nigma will be able to push back Alliance as a clutch buyback from Kuro allows him to save RTW and gives him that chance, that opportunity to keep fighting and provide that Chrono to guarantee two big core kills. It was so close to Limp did the long zip to try to get on top of ILTW, but the false promise comes in. Yeah. ILTW, ILTW able to reset. Great fight. And that's right after Midas is done. Invoker now has spared vessel charges, now has more levels. And perhaps, you know, that early BKB from Nico, baby, it, you know, maybe he did pop it a bit preemptively. As toward the later stages with that buyback, he doesn't have it, and they can actually get on top I of it. Amazing buyback from Kuro. That doesn't yeah. come in. ILTW absolutely dying to, to the burst there from Alliance. Enigma get a chance to fight back solidly as well. Miracle? Back in action though, Lim, he's managed to get the jump over towards Miracle. Stun comes out oh, as well. Nico stunned. Baby's in with a dagger. They take out Miracle. They take down GH as well. Now the turnover towards Mind, Mind control. control. They're able to close the gap with the cookie. Nico Baby's in with the damage. As Alliance, as soon as they got get knocked back to the base, they respawn, they get out, and they quickly pick up three kills whilst Nigma isn't quite ready for the fight to get brought to them that quickly. And was that, was that Hanskin who first got initiated on and then he's able to turn it, it looked like, with his Yules? That was actually pretty sick by the Nyx Assassin. And without Chrono, yeah, they, they're feeling very confident to be able to take those fights not around a tower, where they actually have this good vision advantage. And it's a tier two now claimed for Nico, baby. He is just so rich. Wow, TW. He's away, he's away. I'm going for that bash in next. Making sure that he gets that jump. I mean, on either the Void or, or, or the Invoker, as I say, so much pressure this game really on the supports for Nick. Makuro and GH have to do everything Ooh. to save the two of them, save RTW, save Miracle. Alliance, they smoke under vision. So Nigma, they are completely aware of this one at the moment. Okay. 30 seconds to Chrono. RTW still leading, leading the charge here. He has to be careful. He does yeah, have Kuro is... behind. Very far behind. Look at Kuro's positioning. <laughs> it's in the base because he has to watch out for this Orchid. RTW. Stuns off the mark there from Hansken. Okay, it's Kisses. I mean, they they're going to find Kuro. They're in straight away. GH, he's able to come in with the Snowball. It's going to give time Let's for Kuro. Kuro's going to live for now. They're heading straight over towards Limp. Kuro protecting himself, backing away. They've got the Cold Snap. The jump onto S4. They're controlling the Timbers over. Nico Baby's able to get in on Kuro. He's been able to crit down the Oracle. The Oracle falls. Effigy kicks back, but the Chrono's out. Have they got the damage? The Meatball's coming down. They bring down S4. They turn over towards Hanskin. They've taken two, but Nico Baby's cleaning them up one by one. GH tries to come in to keep RTW safe, but as soon as he's back out of the Snowball, Limp and Nico Baby just continue to clean up Nigma. Nico Baby doesn't get caught in the chrono. He cleans up the back line while it's all going on. They get a nice meteor to kill at least the Nyx Assassin, but Nico Baby coming in strong to clean up those kills. And yeah, this PA just shredding them. And we see at the start of it all, it was a, a little bit Kisses. awkward. They just get the clean vision, that avenue to get straight in onto Kuroki. GH gives them a little bit of time, but now the, the fight just suddenly in a much more awkward position. And as you say, Nico Baby just able to masterfully move target to target on the back lines. ILTW looks towards the big ones at the front, looks towards S4, who's already very low to, to guarantee the kill. I hear this PA getting all the space to head target to target. Yeah, he does waste his BKB though. We see Nico Baby pops it at the end. So at least that for Enigma, it's going to be a little bit shorter at the least, but 
either way. This PA now up to level 18, just jump, like he's jumping from target to target. If they're solo crested, if they're a little shredded, they die in two or three hits, especially now that we have that 450% crit online. And Kuro, his job is so tough. This poor Oracle is just getting focused by this storm, by this PA so hard. And look at this immediately. Oh. He's had to false promise himself. They wander out in the mid lane. Alliance is there ready to jump straight away. Kuro's going to get back up to the high ground. Chich is dying outside of the base. RTW is able to jump away, but there's no false promise to protect him. If they get another stun on him, he's going to go down. Counterplay comes in as they push them back with a meatball. Mind controls in over towards Eco Baby. Eco Baby falling down low. He's going to go down. Nigma, they turn. They take down the PA. And now with Chich, Snowball, they're over towards FNG. They're going to be able to catch the snap fire as well. See if they can control S4, S4, blocked in by the shards. Buyback coming out from Hans Cannon and Zep to get out and save S4. But they're in with the jump, the vessel's down. Another timber chain gets him away, but RTW is going to continue to try and chase Hans Ken. He's going to have a stun to offer to try and hold them back. Burns the matter of mind control, but S4 still continue to get controlled. Mirrored Lim comes in with a big zip of the snowball over from GH. They're in onto S4, they still can't quite kill him. S4 still alive, they're in with the Warriors punch. Finally, they'll bring down the timber saw. Alliance doesn't respect the high ground. They walk up blindly into now a stun, Roshan. into a meteor combo. And now Roche and the Ags is done for oh. Miracle. And he's got Max Exort. It's all coming together. It really is. Just a, a, a push that was made a little too quickly there by Alliance. Nigma ready and, and waiting for the turn and a fight where Krona, it wasn't needed. It wasn't there. Was RTW's now got it back up. They're going to look for some sort of steal. Hands can, can he come in in time? He's going to head in, but the kill's already been taken. They get the edge on RTW. A lot of damage being done by the Kisses and Nygma are getting brought down low. Hands can, can he finish anyone off? He can't. They'll lose the Nyx Assassin. FNG's tried to step forward, but now Nygma's going to look to chase him down. The shards blocking him in. Nico Baby, he's jumping in aggressively, but the Chrono's up. RTW's able to catch the duo. He takes down the snap fire. They've got the lockdown. The full up hoof stop and the snowball straight on the Nico Baby. Nico Baby pulls the BKB, jumps over towards Mirror. ITW getting critted, oh, but he's back up to full HP. The bash is coming. Nico Baby jumping to escape, but there's the chase from ITW as Nico Baby falls. S4 and Lim, they've got to run. They're the last two left alive for Alliance. ITW being forced forward here with the stampede. Lim, he's out of mana. He's running out of options to get away as ITW is in with the form of my control. Triple Ooh, kill for ITW. S4, he's bringing my control and GH down low. The time dilation comes out though. S4, he's not going to have too much more to throw out at my control. Trying to close the gap, but my control just continue to tease him. Give RTW the time to bash into S4. S4 with the Essence Ring. He's tanky enough to get away. Nearly gets the attack room control onto Mind Control. Dancing. They can't quite kill S4, but they kill everybody else. Four of them dying on Alliance. There's Nigma straight out of the Roche pit. Yeah, Alliance, they just throw bodies at them. They try and get a fight going around the timing that Nigma kill off the Roshan. They can't quite do it. No. And a clutch cheese clutch. Chrono coming into play perfectly. Just because they didn't have in those last fights. As Nico Baby, now this third death. And ILTW is fully enabled. He's got so much gold now. He's almost got the MKB now to be able to fight versus that PA in most scenarios. So he might not even need the Invoker spells. That's true. But we do have them. Oh, Cataclysm FNG. fully at the ready. And FNG, he's also found. Starting to really crumble a little bit here for Alliance. We're seeing just sort of hero after hero getting lost. They've got to sort of regroup, start to, to bring back some of the coordinated moves they had earlier in this game, they had in game one, as Nigma really starting to, to outplay them in these team fights. Yeah, and the, the thing is that Kuroki keeps getting jumped, right? Like, they keep getting on this Oracle, but it doesn't matter. They end up having to use so much mana, they end up having to use majority of that BKB on the PA, too, in a lot of these instances, that Nigma, as a team overall, have somehow brought this one back. A solid swing there, you can see 7.5k. Right as it back into the realms of Nigma having the, the net worth lead. And now it's, it's just scary. Like the, the fact that they can just get chronoed. Look, 20 seconds, chrono's gonna be back up. If they get like a two or three hero chrono, the fight's just over instantly. The cataclysm's gonna come in and erase some heroes. And yeah, the, the fights are just way harder now for Alliance. They still have to do the same type of style where they're jumping these back lines, but into Aegis now for two minutes. It's going to give Nigma a lot of time to get this farm and catch back up on all these cards that they've, as they've already done. Just get ahead on these cards, even. Just a few hundred gold for that MKB, RTW. Pushing onto the tier two already. Two minutes of Aegis to play with. And Alliance almost certainly not going to want to take a fight around this tower. They'll let this one go. So Nigma back on track to taking objectives. Our Alliance are now having to be the team that sort of plays on the back foot and, and wait potentially for, for Nigma to, to make some sort of misplay. 
I thought, well, RTW, he's, he's in and he's out. He's ready to play around now with the shard. He didn't take the cooldown. He actually took the attack speed. I thought he would because he got the shard, but... Yeah, I it's think it's so damn good. Yeah, I think the, the attack speed is just more appealing here, I guess, because of that, that the fact that the only other damage really coming in is the is the invoker, right? So he knows that there's more emphasis on him to to just be able to punch down these heroes and get the damage done in the Chrono. And he's got double save, right? So he should yeah. be protected at some point by the Tusk or Oracle if they're the not just smoke. straight gone on they're Alliance. Though. They're looking the for the wrap up. Yeah. Still a minute it's on the, the Aegis, yeah, though. This is, but it is a move that maybe Nigma won't quite expect. Alliance coming in at this sort of timing. They're going to smoke gonna, themselves, though. They've got the high ground here. Hot skin. Nico, baby. Uh-oh. Tornado off the mark, but they're still in. He's going to have to put the BKB. GH comes in with the Warriors punch. Nico, baby's going to try and turn. Gets the jump over towards Miracle, but the false promise is there from Kuro. Kuro's down. They've Kuro got the two him. claws. They managed to trap the PA, trap the storm, but they got the damage. RTW focusing down. Nico, baby, he has. Takes down Nico, baby. Tay Limp's getting low. Limp's going to use that last bit of mana to get away, and he will do so. Limp actually able to escape. Sunstroke comes down. Will bring him low, but Limp still living for now. As they brought RTW Miracle. down once. I hope they can finish up Miracle this time. He's pretty speedy. The dilation. That little dilation stops S4 spell from coming back. But they're up. on to ILTW. He's got another time walk. Alliance can still continue to chase. They have five versus the four. Tornado holds back the two of them. ILTW continue to get focused and run down. Nico Baby starting to run out of mana though. The EMP burning him low, so he's not gonna have too much more to jump in with. And with that said and done, they'll, they'll get the rest of them out of there. And that's Nico Baby's buyback without getting him almost anything. Actually, not getting anything. He gets GH, which is pretty much irrelevant. And now his his complete buildup is just stopped. And now this Void has surpassed them completely. And a small little thing kind of changes things there. Hanskin whiffs the stun onto Miracle and then allows him to actually survive. He gets Fate's Edict. Kuroki actually covers him. He saves him, even though he's getting blasted by Mortimer Kisses in Chrono. I mean, All yeah, that just, magic damage negation. Just an excellent Chrono from, from ILTW in a... In, in a very chaotic position, right? You know, Miracle's getting gone on and bam, lays it down, trapping both Limp and Nico, baby, for a good duration. Yeah. And Limp was right. Limp tried to predict it, too. He tried yeah. to, like, zip to the side That's as four. this was happening, but it caught him. And They're in on him. him. They're going to drop him, make sure they have that additional damage to bring him down low. He's trying to get away. He's not going to be able to do so. S4 down and out for a minute. Alliance has lost their complete footing in the game, especially after that Nico baby buyback. He has to be so careful to not get picked off and yeah they've just they lost they lost the entire map control now as Nigma are able to hit hard even without chrono in multiple different instances and now they're just getting so many items bkb finished on invoker so he's safe versus the nyx now it's a really hard game for alliance to bring back i will see so the the difference in progression here between rtw and nico baby nico baby for the most part he has been holding that lead uh, his last few minutes Nigma just being able to pick up the action, get ILTW into these scenarios where he is just nailing these chrono placements. And, and uh, it all started off that high ground, you know, yeah. just walking up into that high ground a bit blindly into a meteor deafening blast combo. And then the chain kills just continued to happen as Nigma. Now just sticking together. They're not giving up any of these kills. Like the Storm and this Nyx Assassin are not going to find any pickoffs. They're ensuring that they sit behind these big cores. Definitely calming it down quite a bit here, Alliance. This dilation has just been so Mid. problematic for them too. Is my control? Uh, it's a bit of a tease onto Nico Baby, maybe seeing if he can force a BKB out as such. As it is, Nico Baby very scared now. Having to jump back. There's the one wrong move here. If, if Nico Baby dies again whilst buybacks on cooldown, it, it will at least be a, a potentially a set of racks taken away from them. He's just going to be a full item behind now at this point because of that because of that dieback or just because of that buyback and not getting anything out of it. Like he's got the basher, which is great. If he had the satanic, it would feel nice. But even then, like ILTW is about to finish up butterfly soon, so it's problematic for him to get these items out fast enough. Enigma, they're they're looking for the fight. If they catch the chrono, it's the same thing. Like Miracle's already got it prepped. He's I mean, got the meteor and the sun strike at the ready. Yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna get the jump on him. S4. Then with the cataclysm to scout out what's out behind him, and S4 just gets destroyed at the start of the fight. That's the timber saw gone. And even FNG very likely. Yeah, they close the gap. Tornado buys time for Nigma to surround the snapfire. That's another kill for Miracle. Is picked up. 
And the lines just... And that's without Chrono. Yeah, that, that, that's just a stomp and a stampede. Like, that's the beauty of it. And the thing is, they use Cataclysm, but it was an Arcane Rune, so that's gonna be back up pretty soon for the Chronosphere if it does come out. Yeah, lines just... They can't make anything. They can't make any move. Anywhere they show on the map, Nigma is at the ready to go for them. And they're just... They're not catching anybody anymore. Nigma's not splitting up. A oh, very tough spot for Alliance to get themselves out of now. As Nigma, yeah, ILTW and Miracle, you know, had a bit of a, a few deaths here and there in the early game, but his performance has has risen straight back up to the caliber that, that Nigma fans would expect from him. As uh, yep. he's having a, a perfect game, these last few fights, execution, top tier, 12, 5, and 11. And his, his supports, they've, they've really saved the day. Like the Tusk, these little snowballs, have, these yeah. little saves from Kuroki's, it really has saved the day as it was looking quite disastrous for the majority of that early game. Now just f full belief in their cause, Nigma, with this sort of lineup. You know, GH and yep. Kuro knowing as long as they can, as long as they can save them and keep you know, mainly Miracle and RTW alive, these two heroes alone can you know, essentially, they can just carry the game straight out. A good Chrono and a combo in the late game from Miracle We'll, uh, we'll, we'll set up every team fight for success if Alliance get caught by the jump. Yeah, now it's just, it feels like Alliance now has to do what Nigma needed to do earlier. They need to actually just get catch an isolated target and just start with a number advantage somehow. But it's just so tough when they have Kuroki with Blink Dagger, GH with Blink Dagger playing miles away from the team fight. Yeah, Butterfly done on our TW, as you say, you know. S4. Oh. Whoa. He's coming in onto he the high deep. ground. He's going to have the backup on the way over, but he's already very, very low. Oh, the reflective mode. Uh, he's going to dodge mobile. some of the Cataclysm. S4 actually still alive. Mind Control's going to run him down with the Stampede, and they will finally bring him down. GH also going out. He's going to buy back straight away. They're going to continue to try and chase on forward Nigma, but Alliance doing a good job of disengaging with their cores. FNG will get left behind in the river. But the rest of Alliance are out of there. Not a bad hit. That was the reveal of the BKB from Miracle that they forced. So they do know now it's down to that eight seconds. But Ooh, Roche, it's, it's up. up and it they is. don't have Timber. Oh, this is, uh, yeah. It's I a mean, freebie. Can, can they try for any sort of steal? I don't think so. Limp's completely no. out of mana. He's got to go all the way back to the fountain to refuel. Dead too fast. And yeah, it really is just gone in a matter of seconds. So who's taking the there. eggs? Who's um, taking the blessing? My control has it in his inventory. He does. He's just chilling with it. I sure you just want to give it to the Void, don't you? He might feel like Stampede is value. But yeah, I would argue that the Void one would be nice. The Oracle one is actually sick, too. Is he actually going to give it to him? He's thinking about it. No, he right, takes it. himself. All right. It's gotten buffed. Okay. Okay. So why not? And it's, yeah, so that reduced out. It's going to be nice against these areas, you know, like the PA that... For Nico, baby, it's all about what he can do during the BKB. So if the team stampeded for a good portion of the the, the commitment from Nico, baby, with the BKB, uh, it's, yep. the fights are suddenly going to get so much harder. It got harder buffed by a full second. Yeah. So that's like pretty much the entire BKB duration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, they get the jump on Miracle, but there's the Miracle. same. Kuro's in with the jump. False Promise comes out. Miracle ready to turn. Then with the punch up onto Limp. Cataclysm coming down. Limp's able to ball lightning out to the side. A hand skin's falling low. S4's having a run as hand skin will get nuked down by the purifying flames. S4 also to fall as RTW bashes him out of the game. And RTW is not done. Jumping up to the high ground, chasing down FNG. There'll be a buyback from hand skin, but FNG's gone. Two heroes down on Alliance. No buyback for a minute on both of them. It's full retreat from Alliance. There's there's nothing they can do about these big cores now. The Centaur, a bit too tanky. ILTW just leading the charge. He's not invulnerable with this backtrack as At well. Level 25. Yeah. He is huge. And Lions, they, they had a solid early game, but yeah, after that one move, it, it just fell apart completely. Nigma just took full control and their line has just really come together. They seem so comfortable with this sort of setup, these sort of saves around RTW and Miracle that it's just, you, you can almost feel it in the last you know, it's half of this game. Alliance, they, they, did, they just don't know what sort of move to make. No, yeah, absolutely. It's been like what since like that 20, 26 or so minute mark. It's what, just what been can they do? Just stomping the fights, and they they, can't, they just can't do anything. Like Hanskin is scouting the back lines. They're knowing which heroes to jump, but they can't actually finish them off. At this point, now Nigma's just too farmed. They they couldn't let Nigma get to this point in the game. They needed to close it out. Lost the melee racks gone. Nothing that can be done by Alliance. 
Hanskin. Hanskin. Oh, he's gonna go for a poke on Nico, baby. Oh, sorry, he's got the ages. He's got the ages. LTW. He's got most of his mana burned out now. Well, and RTW, he's happy to fight. He's got an Aegis, he's got a cheese. He's, he's yeah, he's like, come at me. Oh, he's I'll, yeah, I'll he's take you his, on. He's shifting that inventory. Right, he's more than happy. He could probably take them all on right now. He's feeling very strong. Let's just keeping all the lanes pushed in. 27k lead refresher orb done now on Miracle. The combos okay. aplenty are ready. Here comes the big boom. Double BKBs as well. He's just so protected as uh, they find Hanskin. They have a sentry in the area. They'll get a free kill. Well, at least we'll get to see a pretty light show, hopefully, as a, if a big chrono does come down, as Nygma have completely controlled this one now. now we, want, we want to see the double the cataclysm. Yeah, let's get it. We want to see the, the, the combos. I mean, Alliance. Oh. I get the jump, can they take it down once? Oh, they can! They can I believe that was what sort of the range bash from the dagger there, setting him up to, to stop him from being able to jump away. So that's, that's the Aegis gone. That's the start for Alliance. GH. I got the jump in on him. Oh, Chrono's There's the down. Chrono. There's the Here Cataclysm, the Double Cataclysm coming out. They don't stand the chance. They don't stand the chance. As Nico Baby and FNG just get blown up by the combo. And GG. there it is, GG is called. We got we got a bit of double cataclysm to close the game up. As Nigma will take this game two, we are going to be going to a game three. Good. I think it's appropriate <laughs> after this. I think Alliance they they played this like the first 20 minutes, honestly, like pretty perfect. Yep. But just two or three slip ups going into high ground blind, they get kaboomed. Just have to be a little more cautious. After when you have this type of comfortable thing, they, they could have like done a lot. You know, there's a lot of things that they could have done, but a couple mistakes. Nigma capitalizes. The Chrono comes back up. They get Rush. Kind of all falls into their favor, as it all is a very fortunate situation for them. But Alliance, they crumbled this time after looking super good in the first game and super good in the early game. It finally falls apart. No, I think if anything, it, it, I, I just feel like this sort of draft that Nigma got through this time. I don't know if teams are going to let them get away with it. with some of these combos. This is sort of just the. The, the core of like this ILTW void, Miracle Invoker, and then having either, either of the saves really, I mean all three of them, of course Mind Control as well with the Stampede, just able to bail these heroes out uh, and play the game to a point where the, the combo, it, it's gonna come out, ILTW is gonna be able to punch back, and you're just really going to struggle to get the jump. And uh, yeah, but with the start, Nico Baby, had, he still ends the game 12, 5, and 12. You know, he was having a good game on the PA. It's just, it seemed like after a certain point, the draft was just a little too hard for Lights to fight into Enigma with. They just, they can't make these mistakes. It's like these little, the little mistakes add up so much. Like even just like an accidental BKB, right? He used BKB like one or two times, maybe a little overzealously. Then the cooldown's even lower. These type of plays, they hurt that much harder when you make those mistakes. As Nigma, they keep their cool. They certainly do. And uh, yeah, for the celebration of general Dota fans all around us, we are going to get a third game between these two teams with Nigma taking the second game. One to one now between Nigma and Alliance. Yes, Alliance lose, and that means everybody wins because we're getting a third. Uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. First, we're going to break down game two and uh, yeah, take a little bit of a breather as well as we head to a small break. My name is Jordan Gilbert, aka Nothing. Hi, my name is Sue Lee. My handle is Smix. I think it's important for these initiatives to happen. Empathy really, really goes a long way, and it always, always means so much to us, and I think that's where initiatives like this really help. I encourage everyone in the community, anytime they see bullying, anytime they see someone getting called names, I encourage you to step up and say something. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun. your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com
It started out so well for Alliance. And by the way, Ooh. see the timing, 25 minutes. If we were to skip the first 30 minutes, Tigov, we would have missed this amazing fight for Team Nigma. Plus or minus five, it's fine, Shiva, it's fine. But yeah, this fight was <laughs> incredible. I'm sure Kyle, he, he wants to comment a little bit about that one. That was the, where the game shifted. It, that it, was the sure. magic yep. that we come to expect from Amen. this stack. Mm -hmm. I was watching community feedback. A lot of low roster change, Kuro's washed up. What kind of TI captain says go on Timbersaw over and over? And then somehow, in a fashion we recall going back all the way to like the TI seven days, they pull out a win with mm. just superior spell casting. GH looked like a totally different tusk after that 25 minute fight. Yeah. They get the dub. Yeah. But I gotta say, Alliance, of, uh, Fog mentioned at the very end of that cast, the first 20 or so minutes, they secured that Roshan with the little shredder. I love the fact that the PA did go for the quick deso, didn't yeah. go for a farming item. They played so well. Yep. And then that first highlight, you make one mistake going high ground. It's, a, it's not even a mistake. It was yeah. a deafening blast okay. interrupting yeah. a timber chain. Okay, new word. You make one aggressive play into a very prepared Nigma. Mm -hmm. Bam. Game changes. But and Why is that a new word? To be fair. I don't know. I, I meant <laughs> it's not a mistake. It's the like, fight before oh, that, they know. had dove base and killed four, to be fair, with the, everyone yeah, escaping yeah, sure. unscathed. So it was really just a solid game of Dota 2. I don't yeah. think Alliance should be disappointed by this. No. Oh, I mean, no. losing sucks, but they... Played a solid game of Dota 2. Thing Miracles, Rush of the, uh, the 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 Vessel slowed his progression down a bit, so everyone's a bit spooked. He's, like, got no items after mm -hmm. starting the game top net worth. To be fair, I don't mind that, though, because I think if he goes, like, an Exhort build, this team's going to have so many issues because Exhort Invoker wants to farm a lot more, and the Void is having issues. You deal with Timber. Like, the Quas mm -hmm. allows you to play into Timbersaw and the Vessel, but Alliance played around that so beautifully, and they're always setting up, and I think Kuroki died way, like, way too many dies in the mm -hmm. start, and it gave Alliance this kind of confidence to keep going. And it was that confidence that Nygma eventually played on when we saw that amazing deafening blast, that media. It's like, okay, you've now come into our territory. We've, we've died to you a couple times now, too many times, but this time, we finally got you, and that's where the Void Invoker... A tried and tested combo yep. really came into play and it was so scary to play into. It was uh, very scary to play into. I'm also curious to hear what Purge picked up on from this second game. Thanks, Shiva. I know what everybody's wanting to know. How did PA get ahead in the early game? Well, guess what? I just want to show you guys what happened. Uh, Snapfire right click with a uh, uh, minus armor means that dagger is a really easy harass with just um, little shredder and a simple dagger from Nico baby that ends up doing about 80 physical damage at the end of the little shredders. They can do some pretty easy harassment towards the, the centaur. Here we are a little bit later. It comes off cooldown. They're going to do it again here. Little shredder, couple hits. There's the dagger. And now what? look at these chunks that the FNG is putting out with like a high 40 damage plus the Blightstone and the Minus Armor. It's a huge amount of damage. You might be thinking, hey, where's GH? Well, he actually messed up the laning stage a little bit here. He did a tag team trade with his enemy support, but he gets late to the stack. Then he TPs mid because he's like, oh, we can get a kill on Storm, which would have been totally possible. If he didn't just use tag team. If he still has tag team here, Limp dies in the mid lane. Mid lane is completely different. So as a result of not pulling the creep wave past and by leaving the lane a little bit too much, Mind Control ends up taking way too much damage from this combo. So what he does instead to recover is he needs to get to Vanguard so that he can get to that glory position where he just doesn't die against PA anymore. He jungles a lot with the Ring of Health, um, gets zoned out again by FNG. He did get one kill on FNG, which is really well done, but goes and jungles for a bit. And then uh, when it comes around bounty, or sorry, the catapult timing, what he ends up doing is really cool. First of all, he gets this free courier that he finds in the middle of nowhere. Then he goes really deep behind the creep wave. And what's cool about this is because he's very vulnerable to death, look at this, Alliances says, okay, free kill. Everybody go for Centaur. They run towards Centaur. He ends up leaving just a little bit early, juking and teleporting. And doing this gives GH time to pull the full creep wave and a catapult on the tower to do a huge amount of damage considering the lane position they're currently at where PA is ahead. This is a really cool move, I thought. But ultimately what it provides is he eventually gets his Vanguard, he gets to run to lane, and now is finally the point where PA can't very successfully lane, where he just gets to run at PA. So by delaying this Vanguard, it allowed Nico Baby to get a lot of uh, early farm and they turn this into obvious cool things like early Roshan, which was really interesting. And this is the reason that PA was able to get ahead, despite the current OP-ness that is Vanguard. Yeah, buy Vanguard in your pubs. It's good. Mm -hmm. 
it's time though. No, you don't have time for another point, Kyle, because game three is actually happening very, very soon. So you know what that means. Get yourself a glass of water. Get ready. More Dota 2 after the break. The third and deciding games between Alliance and Team Nygma coming your way here at Dream League Season 15, powered by Intel. It's upper division of the Western European DPC League. And so far, Team Alliance is undefeated in series. All their series have gone three games, but they have not lost a third game to the series yet. Will Team Nygma make a dent in their squeaky clean record? Or... Uh, well, Alliance just take this one, just like they did all the other ones, with two other ones, by the way. Two quick points. Okay. First off, most of the times when you're working games, you're on Team 2-0. This is one of the few times I can honestly say I am thrilled to see a Game 3. It's late. We just got past midnight. I believe it'll be past 1 a.m. for both the entire squad of Nigma and FNG. Mm -hmm. And we have our decider. And also, how important this decider is. Yo. They, these teams would be tied in the event Kuro and the boys were to take it. Yeah. And I feel if they win this game and this series, that that game two will be a defining moment for this stack. For It validates the roster change. It brings back some of that miracle magic we got so used to seeing years back. But 
Can they get the decisive game three? Alliance immediately deny Centaur because Timber will not ban. Yep. Oof, going through again. Wow. Yeah, but this time the Centaur coming out means that they'll probably, will probably not see it. I mean, I know we yeah. saw a Centaur yeah. tried out as support, but I did not really like no, that. You're, no, you're very right. The Centaur first pick is just a, we're playing this before, but no, going on to what Kyle said, the fact that Nigma in the second game was able to have that type of victory, and then mm -hmm. they've done it, their first ever game with the stack was the same kind of style yeah. comeback in secret. It, They're yeah. now doing it multiple times. It does put a lot of confidence towards Nigma, but then we got to look towards Alliance. In two games, they've shown two different ways in which they nearly won games, right? Yeah. Game one, it's the, they're behind 10K, they come back super impressive. Game two, they have such a commanding lead, but then one one big play from Nigma, Ooh. the game's changed. So yeah, I think both of these teams are playing at a very high caliber. Ooh, and we... I, oh, I just love like the series meta that kind of comes into play, which is, you know, Void. Yeah. yeah. We've seen it a couple times before, but now Void just rising and it's always and rising in series rising. with Alliance. Yeah. yeah. And once again, it's Enigma on second pick, which means mm -hmm. we can almost be certain it will be Miracle's Hero overall final in the draft. Okay, okay. This is a this is a classic combo oh. yep. with the old Ch Shadow Demon Centaur. It's yeah. a good save against uh, the Void. Mm -hmm. They uh, they tried this as well when they played against uh, OG, the first game that they played. It didn't work out. Yeah. They also had a Centaur Shadow Demon, I think, also as opener. They did have an ET5. Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, their lineup wasn't even that bad no, or yeah. anything. It but just they, didn't they, work out. They've run this combo in, in time. I think Season 1 was the main mm -hmm. time that they've, they tried running it. But it's the fact that you have Centaur unlocks a lot of ranged heroes to play because it's the classic big offlane that is independent. You buy the tanky item, in this case for Centaur, it's Vanguard, and your four can be anything. You just stop the pool, you can make some stacks, and you open up the game just to be, you know, a nice, good pace. And the, the Void matches up against pretty much everything Nico Baby really likes to play, with the exception of Wraith King and Morphling, which I expect we'll see banned out immediately. Yep. I mean, so far, I think for both first two games, obviously a lot of back and fight, a lot of fighting, back and forth, a lot of fighting. I think the key heroes, key players every time have been the position one. So yeah, just remove all of Nico Baby's comfort heroes. You already got your ILTW hero for Team Nigma. Yep. You'd be in a in a good spot. That being said, there's a lot of Nico Baby heroes. Indeed. And, uh, and now we start <laughs> banning them. Yeah. <laughs> Wraith well, King was the other option, I think. Is, yeah. They're gonna have to ban out. That's gone right here. And I love the <laughs> force Kuro to draft something else. Like this guy. He is famous for picking the same thing if he feels like it can beat you. And in this case, Invoker Tusk, you really can't think of heroes that are more synonymous with Miracle and GH. Out of and the <laughs> seven games that uh, Team Nigma has played, this including this series, five of those games, GH played Tusk, two of them he played Io. That's it. Yeah, yeah. They they, they like to latch well, on. We'll have a new hero things. today. No, unless, oh yeah, Ooh. I also bent. Oh wow, new hero yeah. for GH. But I feel like when you have Void as your grounding factor of your draft, your four, again, it can also be anything. You just want a little bit more damage into, into the Chrono. Against these type of heroes, I think Willow rise up in prominence because you have, you know, movement to be destroyed by the root. You can set up spells on top yeah. of the disruption. It's a really good shard as well, especially mm -hmm. the way we've seen Centaurs build with the early Lotus. Yep. You drop a Cursed Crown on them. Even if it's removed, it drops Brambles unavoidably mm -hmm. outside of them. So really strong at just providing control. Um, the Stampede was a big issue for Alliance in the previous game. I think that that's why they've yeah. moved it up to first pick priority, because it just landed so many kills. There was that one key moment that helped land the kill on Limp Storm, where the illusion gets Stampede buff, applies the slow, and that allowed the void <laughs> so to close. Through. And that's the Wraith King ban, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tiny too. You can't forget <laughs> oh, we'd almost forget the limp time. Uh, you'd be surprised, it, Chief. It a lot of people through. forget. I mean, there's a reason it was first phase banned. I guess Alliance first phase banded once as well. I just but, love the fact. Yeah. I love the fact that this pick right now, it will show everything that Nick was trying to plan out. Because like, if it's a ranged four, expect some melee off lane. If yeah. it's a melee four, then it's gonna be some obnoxious like ranged off lane for mind control. Keep in mind that Snapfire could also be played by Miracle. True. True. I, I'd hope mm. not. I don't think that's like the, the flashy Game 3 vibes we're going to look for. I agree, but it is obviously an option. Yeah. It is, it, for sure. It is. If, I think if they pick a weak mid lane that can be pressured, then maybe. Just, you just go for the Earth Spirit. You know, no Tusk. What do we take for GH? We just give the man yep. another kill support, yeah, right? It's, 
I, big fan of it against the Shadow Demon. It's uh, something EG with PPD used to do all the time because the Magnetize and the Chrono is a lot of extra damage. You have I... some hard catch mm. so that you don't need to blow the Chrono initially. But the, yeah, the key thing here is when Alliance has this Centaur. Okay, let's go for a Titan King. Like this Centaur.